Hey guys, so we are back with another Marymount video today. This video is extra special because I am hosting some of my favorite people ever to help me answer questions about Marymount. We have all different questions for you guys today. So many different perspectives, so many different amazing students from all grade levels. They are incredible. I will link everybody's social media down below if you want to talk to them, make a new friend, comment something about anything that they said. Please feel free to do that. They are great, great people. Some of my best friends, all of my best friends, and I get so many questions about Marymount and my DMs are always open, you guys know that, and I love to answer questions for you guys. But I do get a lot of repeated questions and some questions that I've made videos about or that are gonna be coming up in future videos. So I'm gonna tell you guys what those are. So I have my MacBook here just really quick. So someone asked about double majoring. I'm gonna link the double majoring video above and below if you guys are interested in checking that out. I am going to do a full apartment tour of the dorms at 55th Street, which is the freshman dorms. I do have a dorm tour video that I will link above and below as well if you guys wanna check that out. And with those videos, I'm gonna link any other video that I've ever made about Marymount down below. If you guys are interested in checking those out, please feel free, share with your friends, and we are so, so, so excited to have you guys next year. So without further ado, here is the incredible video. Again, shout out to my friends, you guys are amazing. Thank you for helping me out with this video, and I hope you guys enjoy! Hey, my name is Laura. I am a content creator living in the greatest city in the world. And welcome to my YouTube channel. I'll take you all around New York City, and I'll record it all on my camera. Please enjoy today's video. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Hello, my name is Jacob Rochelle, and I am an RA at Marymount Manhattan College. And I'm here to answer some of your questions about the residence halls. Someone asked to explain how dorming works. So it's different depending on whether you're an incoming freshman or you're a current student at Marymount. Um, but for incoming freshmen, what happens is once you decide you're gonna come to our school, you will submit a $500 deposit, which will confirm your spot in the housing selection. Then after that, you fill out a form that uh, shows who you are, your preferences for rooming, things like that, in case you haven't already selected people to live with. If you're incoming and you've met someone, maybe at Accepted Students Day or through the Facebook groups and you guys decide you wanna be roommates, what you can do is request to live with each other. So if you two mutually request to live with each other on your housing forms, then uh, nine times out of 10, you will be able to place into the same room together. The room sizes vary from four to seven people. And then also in that apartment, Sometimes the room can have uh, up to four to six people or each, some rooms can have two, some rooms can have four. It all depends. Um, but as long as you request to live with someone, you can request to live with that person, but you can't choose what size room you get placed into. So if you were thinking about maybe living in, uh, you wanted to live in a four person room as opposed to maybe a five or six person room. Unfortunately, when you're coming in as a freshman, you can't decide which room you get, but you can decide who you want to live with if you met someone. If not, uh, don't fret there. Uh, we do match people up and select roommates for you. But then um, of course, if you find someone to live with, there are ways to then live with them, which you can figure out once you get onto campus. Hey guys, my name is Ashley Simsis. I'm an MT at Marymount and a really good friend of Laura's. Hi, I love you. So today I'm gonna be talking about how I found my roommates, if I have any tips about that, and if I met my roommates before coming to Marymount. So yes, I did meet my roommates before coming to Marymount. Um, I only met one of them. We met at my audition, and this is a really great way, right off the bat, that you're gonna find a roommate is if you are an MT major, dance major, acting, directing, anything with an audition or an interview, take advantage of who you met there because that's a really easy way for you to automatically A, meet someone, you know what they're like, and be, get close to them, be friends with them. Um, so I met one of my roommates, one of seven. It sounds crazy, I know it is, but honestly it was so fun and we were all so close. Um, it's just like a party all the time, big family. There was four in my bedroom, three in the other, but it was honestly so fun and I love my roommates. The rest of our roommates kind of came to us through mutual friends and the Facebook group. So that's my second tip that I'm gonna share with you guys is absolutely, absolutely join the Facebook groups for Marymount Accepted Students, the Instagram page, follow it, request it, everything, because I know for MTs, there's always a Facebook group and an Instagram page. So if you are an MT, check that out because that is a hub for all of you to kind of chat and get to know each other and 
share your interests, where you're from. And like, that's a great way for you to be like, I would vibe with her, I would vibe with him. Like, let's talk. And you have all their contact info in those social media platforms. So take advantage of those guys. And the last question that we have is, do upperclassmen typically live in dorms? So I'm a sophomore and I am an RA at the Cooper Square Residence Hall. We have two different residence halls, 55th Street and Cooper Square. 55th Street is mainly for our freshman students. We do also sometimes have transfer students there, but mainly what happens is Cooper Square is for upperclassmen students as well as transfer students. With that being said, there are some students who after their freshman years will move off campus into say their own apartments or things like that, but we do have those residence halls that are occupied by upperclassmen, me being one of them, along with a lot of other people that live there. It's gonna be down in East Village uh, in a great area with access to restaurants, uh, the same amenities as 55th with the gym and laundry room. There is no convenience store there, but still uh, we do have Heavenly Market down there that people can spend their dining dollars at. And people do love living down there. I love being down there. It's a great area down by NYU and Washington Square Park where you can just go hang out and grab a bite to eat. And yeah, so people, upperclassmen do live in dorms in our Cooper Square residence hall. Hi guys, my name is Brianna Trilling and I am a sophomore musical theater student at Marymount Manhattan College and I am here to answer some questions today. The first question is who can audition for the musical productions? Is it just the musical theater majors or is it the acting majors as well? And the answer is that in the fall, when auditions first start to happen for the spring semester, all musical theater majors have to audition for those spring shows. It is mandatory and it is part of your grade. In the spring, when auditions happen for next year's fall semester, that is when I believe the acting majors can start to audition and they can audition for the musicals and the plays and the musical theater majors, once again, have to audition for the musicals and then they can also audition for the plays if they want. Question that we also got that kind of goes along with that is how do student run productions work at Marymount? Pretty much the student run productions are always through the Musical Theater Association Club. And basically at the end of each year, around April and May, there will be an application that goes out, um, taking any ideas for shows that you want to put on in that club. So you pick a show, you get your team together, which is really fun because that's also an opportunity to meet other majors at Marymount because you're not just picking your director and choreographer, you're picking a sound designer, a light designer, a costume designer, a dramaturg, all of that good stuff, a music director. Um, so it's a really great way to meet other people. And basically you will go through a couple rounds through that, your show has to get approved. You obviously have to have the rights for it. And then the last round is the students will vote. It's all in their hands. It doesn't really have to do with faculty. You give a presentation and the students will pick what they want to do and who presented themselves the best. And then from there, you're kind of completely on your own. You start to run the show, you hold auditions, and there's a faculty advisor in that club that will guide you through everything and be there for help. But it is mostly the students work. I mean, it's pretty much all the students work. There's just guidance. So it's pretty awesome because you get to see your friends um, like put something on rather than just watching them perform. So it's really great and I love being a part of it and I love watching my friends do it as well. So the first question that she asked me to answer was, how do you juggle a rehearsal schedule and being an MT? It's definitely hard. I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. Something that really is cool though for the main stages is the main stage actually counts as a class. So as opposed to taking your five classes a semester, you only have to take four. And so that definitely helps lighten um, the course load. So I had enough time to make sure I was on top of my schoolwork, doing well in my classes, as well as being on top of, you know, lines and blocking and choreography and everything for Greece. They really emphasize the importance of like, obviously like schoolwork comes first. Like that is really important. You don't, if you get cast, like, yes, that is super exciting, but you can't just like forget 
every other reason that you're at the school for. So it's really important to make sure you're on top of everything. The next question is if there are opportunities for non-BFA majors at Marymount and the answer is yes. There are plenty of clubs that have to do with theater that is open for any major. One example is the Musical Theater Association, which I talked about a little bit in another clip, but they put on cabarets and they put on a show that's completely run by students every year and that is open for any major anyone to be in, which is really fun and I love watching their work. There's also the Student Theater at Marymount Club, which is open for any major. And then there's Improv Club, Sketch Club, which um, they rehearse like once a week, open for anyone. And then they have lots of performances as well, which is really fun to watch and fun to go and support your friends. Hello, my name is Jessie Boris and I'm a freshman musical theater major at Marymount right now. And I'm gonna be answering the question, pertaining to what dance wear should I have for daily dance slash like what's the dress code usually. First off, I just want to say there's really no dress code for daily dance. So it's basically like whatever your teacher wants slash just like what the vibe of the class is. So I can only speak to my class. I was in Stephen Harding's daily dance class. So his was a lot of like commercial jazz. So I'll talk to like what we were in that class, but it might change just depending on what dance class you're in. But for ours, it was, we did jazz Mondays and Fridays and he was very much like commercial jazz. So we would wear any sort of leggings. Usually people wore leggings for jazz day. And I wore Lululemon or Fabletics, whatever leggings that you like, colored or black, it didn't matter. And then either a leotard on top or like a crop top or a sports bra or some sort of athletic wear. Usually the dance class lends itself to more athletic wear on the jazz class days and not necessarily like you have to wear a Leo. I did wear a lot of colored Leos with um, leggings over them. That was like probably what I wore mostly for jazz days. And then some people wore like athletic crop tops or Lululemon crop tops, just like kind of whatever you felt comfortable in dancing jazz. His jazz was very athletic. You'd probably be sweating. So you wanted something that um, you'd be comfortable in for ballet day. I definitely wore tights and a Leo. A lot of people didn't. A lot of people wore whatever they felt most comfortable in and honestly it didn't matter. As long as you could move, it isn't a, it isn't a big deal what you wear, I promise. I wore Capizio pink tights to transition tights because a lot of the days when we did ballet bar, we would still end the class with a combo that was a little bit peppier and more jazzy or contemporary. You'd want to be able to put different shoes on, so I'd definitely get transition tights, pink, capizio, block, whatever you really feel comfortable in, it's up to you. And then as far as Leos, I wore a lot of black just because I like black, but a lot of people wear a lot of color. I promise like whatever you feel comfortable in is going to be perfect for your dance class. Those are just some suggestions on what I wore, but whatever you feel comfortable in, I promise it's going to be perfect. But I'll speak a little bit on dance shoes. For jazz class, pretty much everyone in my class had Luduka shoes. So I have the three inch Elizabeth soft um, sole. They're amazing and I love them literally so much. And a lot of people in my class had these exact ones or different versions of these. If you consider yourself a dancer or you want to be, I would highly recommend investing in a Laduka shoe just because honestly, it's just so much more professional looking and it's what you'd be dancing in if you work professionally. So it's just good to start getting those skills now, dancing in a good character shoe. As far as tap day, we had tap every single Wednesday. I have these tap shoes. They're the Capizio like flex tap, I think it's called. Um, I literally love these because since they have like the split sole, you can do um, toe stand so much easier, turn so much easier. Your arch is like a lot more pronounced in these as opposed to, I have these ones too, the Capizio tan and it's not split sole like it's hard in the middle and i feel like my feet look like worse in them so it's literally just preference some days we did more contemporary um i have like tan and black jazz shoes as well as just like a pzo pink ballet flats that i would use for bar best of luck if you guys are coming to marymount next year we're so excited to have you daily dance is literally so fun and i can't wait to meet everyone that's coming next year and yeah happy dancing the next question is when the performance season is announced how do auditions work so basically when they announce the season they're going to give you a theme for it as well for example, this past year, our theme was shows that take place in school. And then on top of that, we do like a new works or tribute or a song cycle. We did a tribute to Hal Prince this past year. 
when they announce that theme, they will give you like the style of the two songs you need to sing for the general audition. So this past year, once again, the styles of our songs that we had to sing was a 50s song and a like classical MT song. So you will go in the room probably around the end of October for the spring season and you will sing those two songs for this big panel and it will be for every show because it's just one big general audition. It's pretty quick, it's pretty easy. It's usually 16 to 32 bars of each song. You go in, you talk to your accompanist, you sing the two songs, you kill it obviously. And then you walk out, you're done with the general audition. From there, they will start doing callbacks for specific shows. So you will go in for whatever show you get a callback for and you will start to prepare specific material that they're probably giving you. Since you only sang for your general call, usually the callbacks for the shows specifically have dance calls for each. So you could be called back for all three shows and have to do different dance calls for each show because it's starting to get a little more specific. Sometimes they'll narrow down callbacks from there as well to just make the pool smaller so there's less people to choose from. Sometimes they will just do one big callback for that specific show and that will be it. It really depends on who's directing that year and it depends on what they want and what process they want. This past year they kept narrowing things down so there were a couple callbacks, probably two to three for each show separately. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty fun because when you get to do the callbacks, it's kind of a cool glimpse to get to work on that material and work with the director and choreographer and see what they want. Hi, I'm Allie and I'm here to answer some questions for Lore. Can you talk a little bit about daily dance? So daily dance at Marymount is super fun. Um, we dance every day. Everyone is divided into sections um, with a different teacher. Uh, you're with the same people all year, which is really cool. So even after the first semester ends, um, you stay with that group. And it's really cool because you get to bond with everyone and then those kind of become like your people, or at least in my case at Marymount, that's kind of what's happened. It's incredible training and the fact that it's every day is so consistent and you really can see your progress. Hi, I'm Kate. I'm a BFA musical theater major and I'm talking about the Honors College. So I'm also a member of that. And basically what the Honors College requires is that you take six Honors classes throughout your four years here at Marymount. I've already completed three as a freshman. And the biggest question that I get asked is, are the classes manageable with the BFA? And yes, they completely are. Not only are they manageable, but I still feel like I have a lot of free time just to do other things and focus on theater. Basically, you could take whatever honors classes you want. I have taken philosophy, writing, and psychology. They're really great and academically challenging. I knew that coming to this school, I wanted to be challenged academically because I also love school on top of theater and this college really does. And I think in the long run, it's very beneficial. So yeah, I highly recommend. Hi, Laura, what's up, girl? Hi, Laura's audience. How are you guys doing? So who is my favorite professor and why? Well, this is easy. Corey Lieberman is my all time favorite professor. <laughs> I could go on and on about him, paragraphs on paragraphs, but I'll keep it short and sweet. He is one of my favorite people on the planet. He has helped me get through Marymount, honestly, and I don't even think he knows that. I had my first class with him my sophomore year, and I walked in and he was just immediately so bright, so on it. Not only does he make his teaching so fun and interactive, so you can't really get bored, but also he's so good at it. Like, he's so smart. He knows his lectures like this. And I always thought like, oh, maybe I'll be a professor one day. And he just set the bar all the way here. He's always going on a tangent about what he's teaching you and you just know that he knows what he's talking about. He's just one of those people that whether or not he knows what he's talking about, he can fool you into thinking he knows exactly what he's talking about even if he researched it yesterday. Literally during class he has a notepad on the desk and every time one of the students says something that he doesn't really know about or has never heard of before, he'll write it down and he'll go home that day and look it up so he knows. He's so eager to learn more and he just wants to know everything. No matter how long he's been teaching or how much older he gets, there is always something new to learn for him and that's just inspiring because especially in your teenage years you kind of think you know it all. He probably actually knows it all and he will never act like that. Like there's just always so much for him to learn. It's really inspiring and almost humble that he's so high up in his um, teaching career and still he doesn't act like it. Like he, he's just, he's great. And 
Besides the teaching part, he is so down to earth fun to talk to. He's hilarious. I'm really, really lucky that I met him and I feel like we're gonna be BFFs for life, hopefully. We've become really close now and I'm really lucky to have a professor also be sort of like a friend. Hey everyone, my name is Jake Ladwin and I'm a freshman at Marymount Manhattan College in the BFA musical theater program. And I have the privilege to answer the question, have I noticed any opportunities within the city? And yes, there are so many opportunities on campus and off campus. So you never have to feel that you are not going to be involved on campus because there are so many opportunities. But I do like to download the Today Ticks app as well as the TDF app to get discounted Broadway tickets because I do have a couple friends in Broadway shows who I like to go see once in a while. Also, I do know that many of my friends will say about me that after any show I see, I will go to Junior's Diner to get their famous cheesecake. It's so good, I highly recommend it. And I do also recommend going to Central Park and going for a walk because it's always great to feel grounded because you're not at home and you want this place to be your home. So I do recommend to do that as well as go to the High Line, walk around that, as well go find some eateries and go shopping and just put in that destination in your Google map and have a great time. So hope to see you guys soon, thanks so much. I'm Addison McFarlane and I am a first year with Lore. My question today is how hard is it to navigate New York City? And my answer for you is not hard. I was so scared to come in and learn how to get around because I still use GPS in my hometown and it is not even close to the size of New York. I got this app called City Mapper at the very beginning of the year and it taught me all the subway lines. It would tell me the minute the train was coming to the station I use. I could compare walk time to taxi time to subway time. So that was really important to me in learning because at the beginning I literally had no idea what I was doing. So that was a really fast way to learn the lines and um, learn what neighborhoods are safe and what parts of town you wanna to be in at nighttime or um, what lines aren't running that weekend. That's really important. So I think that was the easiest way for me to learn. And you know, once I used it for like a month or two, I had it down. I think you could drop me off anywhere in Manhattan and I could find my way back to the dorm without a map. It is super, super, super easy. I'm from Franklin, Tennessee, but here I, I really figured out how to get around super easily, the most efficient way. So if you're worried about that, I promise, promise it will grow on you and you will learn how to use the subway system. Okay, second question. So this question is, what is it like moving to New York from a small town? So my house is technically in Franklin, Tennessee, which is a very small town. I actually went to high school in Nashville, so that's a pretty big city and I got to enjoy that too, which also made me recognize why I love cities. Franklin itself, where I'm from, is a lot of farms, a lot of animals and grass and trees. So it definitely is a huge difference from New York City. Something that I think I realized after I moved is how much I appreciate my hometown. Before it's kind of like, I wanna get out, I wanna get out. And then when you move, you realize all the reasons it's special and you realize all the reasons the city's special and you kind of get to live this like Hannah Montana, best of both worlds situation where you can go have fun in the city and then come home and pet your horse. I don't know, I think it's so special. Being able to experience two things that are so different and that's what life's about is just trying new things and experiencing things that scare you. So I think if you're making a big move, like, like I did a thousand miles away from home, it's totally worth it totally worth it even if you change your mind it's so important for your self-growth to take a leap like that so i totally recommend it and i think that it's very possible honestly maybe even better when you move from a small town because they're just so different you appreciate so much more about both places I have the opportunity to answer the question. Since Marymount is a small school, do you ever notice if it's clicky? And I have to say no. Even though it's a small school, you're a name and not a number. And that's why I was drawn to Marymount itself. The student body is absolutely incredible. Everyone is so supportive, kind, outgoing. Everything you would want in a student body, Marymount is that. So if you have any questions, please reach out. We're here for you and I'd love to be friends with you and hope to see you all in the fall. Thanks so much. So it is super um, common for people to have jobs at the school to participate in work study. I worked as a residence hall guide. I worked one day a week you could probably work two max maybe if you don't have that many uh, co-workers or other people working for them 
but there are always opportunities for people to work with um, Center for Student Services and admissions and um, the financial department. Plenty of opportunities. I think it's a great way to get to know people at your school. I, I really enjoyed my job. I really did like it. Um, but yes, plenty of opportunities. It is common, very common, and it's a very good idea. My name is Lonnie Besson. I am going to be a sophomore in the fall at Marymount Manhattan. And Laura just kind of asked me here to talk about like the social life of Marymount Manhattan. Because I remember I originally thought like when I was going to Marymount that I wasn't really going to have like the college normal experience of partying, hanging out with my friends, dorm events and stuff like that. And by like day two of me there, I was like, oh no, sweetie, we are going in and it's gonna be so fun and I'm gonna make the best memories. My one piece of advice throughout this whole little short snippet, Top Spots NYC, stay away. They'll take your money and the events aren't fun. They're over capacity, so it's just like, sweaty people if i can just tell you any advice if you're wanting to go out to a club with your friend just go to pedro's pedro's has great tacos but that's like a really fun spot to hang out with your friends and it's right by the dorm and i used to go there all the time um and then there's a place next door if you're kind of like me that's like more grungy called strange love and they have really good wings and it's just like a fun vibe and like they play rock music which is like more my my vibe another really great thing to do I should just kind of connect like and network yourself through Marymount. So join a club, do an MTA show, maybe you book a main stage show. Through that, you kind of meet upperclassmen. I am living proof that you can have a social life and maintain academics. I'm a musical theater major, so I'm super busy. And I maintained a social life through my friends. Um, friending people from all different departments is always great. I have dance major friends, film major friends, fashion major friends, acting friends. And through them, you just kind of like interloop, meet people from other schools. Like that is so easy. I knew, happened to know someone at NYU and through them, I went to a bunch of NYU like get together parties frat parties and it was really really fun and then i would invite them to marymount stuff if you have any other questions um feel free to dm me on instagram my dms are always open and i'm always looking to meet new people to bring out with me and my friends what are some good spots to wind down slash decompress i love going out with friends i love spending time with friends and that is a really good way to wind down decompress you know go out get a little freaky or like stay inside have a movie night go for a walk with your friends, that's so nice. But also, I value my alone time like no other. Um, some spots that I love um, are, well, first off, I feel like I have to say this, The Bean. It is downtown and it is just like a little coffee shop where I go to like do homework or to just chill. And I literally, like Laura can attest to this because we lived together last year. I got to a point where I literally couldn't do my homework in the dorms. Aside from that, I also love going to Central Park. So anytime it's like nicer out, I would always just walk down to Central Park and I would bring my homework and I just find a rock or someplace to sit and I would sit down and I would do my homework there or just listen to music or just go for a walk by myself. And yeah, so those are some ways that I like to wind down and decompress. So what do people wear to class at Marymount? People wear anything and everything to class at Marymount. Some people might want to show up in their sweats and their sweaters and their sneakers and nobody cares because we've all been there. We all understand that vibe. Some of us are currently on that vibe right now and have been for months. But on the other hand, you have people who are flexing their best outfits for people. And if that's your vibe, if you want to show up to math class and flex, then go right ahead and people will just praise you because it's such a small community that everybody sort of looks out for each other and you understand each other. And that's the great thing about Marymount and the great thing about Manhattan in general is that everybody is, you know, learning more things about themselves. And especially being a freshman in college, you learn so much about yourself. I know I did. Just express yourself in literally however you want. So anyway, thanks. <laughs> Okay, so I literally had to make a list for this one because I couldn't narrow it down, but I tried. So the next question is, where do you recommend to eat in the city? I divided it up into three sections for like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I live downtown in the East Village. It's not really near Marymount's campus, but it's a short, um, bit away. So for breakfast, I really love Grey Dog. There's a bunch of locations. Um, the Butcher's Daughter and Two Hands, which also has multiple locations. I tend to eat pretty clean. So the eggs and avocado toast at these places are all 
really good. For lunch downtown, I am always at Ruby's. They have a few locations, which is super cool. Um, Atla is a great place for Mexican. I'm a huge Mexican fan. Um, Old Rose over in the West Village is super cute. And then something that you can kind of find anywhere, Sweet Green and Dig In. Great options, um, salads and big bowls. And then dinner, again with Mexican, La Palapa and Rosie's are two of my favorite places downtown. And then Italian is another one of my favorite foods. So I love this place called Little Frankie's in the East Village, it's super cute. And then like fancy night out, you have the money for whatever reason, none of us usually do. But if you do, RH Rooftop in the West Village, best burger in the whole city, super good, really cool atmosphere and great for pictures. Hey guys, so the next question that I'm gonna be answering is how much money did you spend per month on food while living in New York City? Food per month, I would say it depended definitely on the day. Weekends, you know, you're out more with your friends and that is gonna lead to, you know, buying food places, um, you know, going out to eat, everything. So I would say like, it definitely varied. On weekends, I would spend maybe 15 to 30 a day. And then on weekdays, I would spend like 10 to 15. I know for me, I had a budget of I could only spend 10 to $15 on food and other like necessities per day because I'm very fortunate to be at Marymount, but my family is not as well off. So I have budgets like per day. I also worked like almost full time while I was in the city. So I would say, Definitely budgeting your money is gonna be super helpful because New York is crazy expensive, you guys. But you will not starve. I promise you won't starve. And you won't go broke if you're just smart about, you know, how you're spending your money and when. So I would say honestly per month, my total would range from like 300 to 400, 450 a month on food. You know, sometimes it was less than that. Some months it would be in the 200 to 300 range or less than that. But that does not include dining dollars, you guys. You guys will be fine and I'm so excited for you all to come. Is the food at Marymount good? Yes. In my opinion, the food at Marymount is very good. I ate there every single day during the school year. I didn't have breakfast there as much because I usually um, had class right in the morning so I couldn't eat breakfast. But um, they do have served breakfast, um, like eggs and tater tots and like hash browns and bacon and stuff like that. Um, the lunch is extremely nice and extremely tasty. Um, they have a lot of stations that rotate throughout the week, but they have ramen stations, um, hot sandwiches, different type of panini presses. Um, they also have french fries and curly fries and mozzarella sticks and sandwiches and hamburgers and chicken sandwiches and fresh sandwiches that you can like make like a Subway vibe. <laughs> um, and they also have smoothies, which are fantastic. They have salads, they have fresh sushi that they make every day, they have pizza, they have a hot food station, which is, you know, like right in the middle of the dining hall, they have like hot food you can choose from. And for the most part, it's all very healthy. You definitely have the option to get like healthy things or get things that are like less healthy, but um, it's totally up to you. Um, also in the 55th dorms, they have the C store on the second floor, which is a lifesaver. The hours are pretty good, um, but they serve stuff like ice cream and like microwave stuff and a lot of drinks and chips and snacks. If like if it's late and you're like, you're out of class and you like want food, just run down to the sea store and you can pick up something. Um, and they take your dining dollars just like they do at the school. Um, so the sea store is very convenient. Sea store convenience store, <laughs> forgot about that. Um, and also Morningstar is the diner that's um, in between 50th and 51st. And that my friend, is a lifesaver. The amount of kids at 55th that get Morningstar multiple times a week is crazy. The menu is really great. They take our dining dollars. It's so great and so convenient. You just call them up and go, Morningstar, here's my order. Give me your ID number and then they pull up. Very tasty. There's also some other food places. There's another diner called Midnight Express. I haven't had very much food there, but I heard it's fantastic. I like the food at Marymount. Hey guys, have not seen my face in a while, but I really, really, really hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. I hope this video was super helpful and it answered all of your questions. But like always, if you have any other questions, you guys can always DM me or DM the incredible people that were in this video. Again, all of their social medias will be linked down below. Below. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. If you did, leave a like, comment down below. If you don't want to, I don't really care. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye! Baby, this is simple.